Ladies and gentlemen, fight number five this evening will be contested in the featherweight division over three three-minute rounds. And introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 65.6 kilos and trains out of Mackay MMA, holding an undefeated amateur record of three wins for zero defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jaron Geronimo Wag. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner he weighed in at 65.9 kilos and trains out of Puma. Also holding an undefeated amateur record of two wins for zero defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dom Aston. Now man in the middle. All right, round one, you ready? Amateur featherweight bout scheduled oh. for a possible three, three minute rounds. And here we go, round one to near Nathan Cage side. Carl Noak, it is good to be with you. Oh, it's great to be here tonight to watch these fights. Everyone's performed so far, and it looks like this fight's starting off the same way as all the others. High pace, great guys. Beautiful outside leg kick there. And with Ooh. a guy with such heavy hands with Jaron Wag, you look for Dominic Aston to attack that league leg, take away some of that power car. Absolutely, you know, get him hesitant to throw his punches. The more he attacks that front leg, the less power he's going to be able to put on his, on his punches. And that's an, I would expect that from someone like Vince Perry too, to come out with a smart game plan like that. You can really hear how much power that Jerome's throwing in these punches. You can hear him yelling out. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of venom in those punches Absolutely. from Geronimo from as he finds himself a nice straight right counter to Dom Aston's low calf kick. And Dom Aston's got a great high guard, not letting too many of them strikes come through. Landing some heavy shots of his own as well. Well, we've seen both these guys in the past have a lot of success with their hands. You know, what Jerome has, there we go. What he has to be careful of is not trying to punch himself out. Someone that throws heavy like that has a chance of, and as he comes up, he's got to protect himself as he comes up as well. Well, he's getting tagged here, and you can hear his corner screaming, get your hands up. I don't think he was affected by any of those shots. Uh. Be careful with them hands being a bit low too. Dom Aston keeping things quite tight. Wag there we go, that leg fighter. again. We see how hard that leg landed. And he's taken away some of that power, Kyle. Absolutely. I think that's the game plan for these guys. The more they can attack that front leg, they can take his legs away, and he's going to be unable to throw heavy strikes. We can almost see Jaron almost limping on that lead leg, yeah, courtesy I, of Dom Aston. I think that last one really landed hard. Definitely. Speaking of landing hard, a nice <laughs> right hand around the corner, but Dom Aston comes back oh. with some more effective shots on his own, and again, that low calf kick, Kyle. Yeah, beautiful. he's setting it up beautiful each time. Each time he's a little, couple little strikes high and then finishing with a big leaping leg kick. And two hard jabs land for a drone there. Beautiful stiff jab catching. Dom Aston just behind the ear again, and the speed and the timing of Jaron Wag doesn't necessarily seem to be phasing Dom. No, how's the chin on Dom too? He's taking some heavy shots and hasn't even looked phased yet. Indeed he is. And there's that leg kick again. And you see the welts on, on Drone's leg as well. Oh, I think those shots goodness. are really hurting him as Dom's legs are unload right now. And it may be in Jaron's best interest just to get a hold of Dom to slow things down, but he wants to trade. Ten seconds left in this explosive round. So those hands coming low, there we go. That's a problem with having them hands so low as a power striker. Have a go at that Dominic Gaston taking full advantage. As Dom runs that. to him to start the fight. And Jaron back. Dom not scared to stand in front of the power striker like Jerome as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to be careful catching that low kick as we saw Dom Aston, that hip stick stereo, yeah, he can go that, high. That double leg there. As he looks beautiful to the pick, single oh. leg pick. A oh, beautiful knee on belly now. He's going to look to get in the mount position now. Beautiful drone, just pushing him off, control on the ground. Nice as he goes to a, a half guard there. And a great start to round number two for Dorm Aston. Yeah. No, drone tried to bridge out there, but left him in a uh, Dom and the ability to get a quarter mount now. Dom's in a great position. If he can posture up and control that arm, he can land some big shots there and look to take the back. If he could just posture up now and start landing some strikes. He has great control. He's got a 
I actually prefer being in quarter mount position like this over a full mount. Like I said, you can still posture up and land some heavy strikes, but you still have the ability to take the back. And when you do have the back, you get one hook in already. So it's a great position to be in. Well, most definitely. And uh, as Dom Aston continues to tax away, Lactocasic, no doubt, building up in the uh, in the arms of Jaron Wag. Yeah, and this is what you want to do to someone like Jaron as well. It is Jaron, sorry, is to take him down, gas him out a bit, make him work from the bottom. So when he does get back to his feet, there's going to be a little bit less power in his strikes. Most definitely. Game plan going accordingly for Dom Aston and the team at Puma. I would like to see Dom get in that full mount now and land some big strikes from there. And there here we go. go, starting to posture up, Kyle. And there we go. There's that quarter mount, like I said. You can still do some great there. And goes into full mount now to land some big shots. And Jared, he's extending those hands. He's not necessarily landing flush, but those punches are getting through. He's got to defend himself here. Yeah, Jaron, Jaron just trying to lock up them hands, trying to put them out in his face so he can have a really good clean strike. But Dom doing a great job of sneaking them strikes in there. And as we count down the last 30 seconds, Kyle, is there anything Jaron can do to savor this round? Or I think this round's done, but if he can get back onto his feet, he can make it look like he hasn't lost the round too much to the judges. And it's a great mental uh, win for him if he gets back to the feet before the end of the round. Almost definitely. Nonetheless, just be careful. Those arms are a little bit too high. You can look at Dom can actually secure an arm bar here if he can isolate one of them arms. Well, with 10 seconds left, as we see him go for that arm bar right, now, exactly. Right on cue, Kyle. There's a triangle. He's be careful here. Time. Time. A Hall of Famer in Australian MMA. Touch of gloves, and we're underway. And look for Jaron to come out firing as he does so. Yeah, let's see how long it takes for Dom to get that fight back to the ground. There we go. Shoot straight away. Nice body lock on the back take there. Hook in, beautiful. Takes him to the ground. Both hooks come in now. Picture right. perfect technique there, Cole. He must have an earpiece in because he's definitely <laughs> listening to what you're saying. Yeah, and Jaron doing a good job of hand fighting right now. Very impressed with the way that Dom was able to weather the storm in round number one. <laughs> you come back in round number two and... Uh, Make the most of it, and now he's having words <laughs> with Jaron Wag. He's doing a good job on the back there. Jaron's just doing a good job of controlling that hand. He's not letting him get him free to secure anything. The there we go, the body lock triangle again. It's going to be hard to get out of this now for Jaron. He's looking for that rear naked choke. Does he have it, though? Jaron doing a good job of hand fighting right now and stopping him from getting that choke right across the neck. And he's still got a bit of strength here on his back, uh, does Jaron Wag, but in complete control is Dominic Aston. And uh, as we saw him giving Jaron the word, the action follows. Yeah, and Jaron never saying die, throwing strikes from, from, from the <laughs> ground there on his back. Well, when you can't defend, attack Kyle. Exactly. Great control here by Dom. He's, he's doing an awesome job here of switching from control for the, the body lock and going back to a, a regular back take. <laughs> Great show of sportsmanship shown between both of these men. Definitely enjoying themselves inside the cage. Jaron Wag with that never say die attitude. <laughs> but Tom Aston. Continues to control this fight. Oh, nice shot there. From Landing Dom. some good shots. As Jaron Rag replies with some of his own. <laughs> He'll find shots from anywhere, Kyle. Oh, and I'm sure they've still got a lot of power in them, too. The guy's got some heavy hands. 30, almost 30 seconds left in the round. There's still a chance for Dom to win this fight by submission. He goes back to that body light triangle. And he's just making Jaron work here. And in the eyes of the judges, Kyle, you'd have to think, Dom Aston. Yeah, you can hear you can hear Jaron, Jaron's corner calling for him to get up, try, trying to get him to get up to the feet and, and look for something to finish the fight. <laughs> Both guys talking to each other. Well, with 10 seconds left, they continue to talk to each other. 
But they're both working here. Then they get up and are they going to trade to the final bell? Oh. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the bout 30 to 26, 29 to 27, and 29 to 28. All for your winner by unanimous decision in the red corner, Dom Aston.